Uh, our next speaker is Mary Waite, who is the campaign coordinator for the uh, campaign that's running in Brewer at the moment. First of all, I would like to acknowledge God the Great Creator. I would like to acknowledge my elders, past and present. I would also like to acknowledge the traditional owners whose land we stand upon tonight, the Gadigal people, the Eora Nation. My name is Mary Waits. I am a strong, proud black member woman, and I am the local co coordinator for the Literacy for Life, the Yes I Can campaign in my community of Brewarana. I come from a family of seven children, six girls and one boy. My brother was the eldest of us all, who is now deceased, and, is, and so is two of my sisters, and both my beautiful parents. There is four of us girls left, and I am the eldest. My family and I all lived in New Warren all our life, and grew up on the outskirts of town, the, the fringe toilers, as they would say, at a place called West Bewarrina, better known as Dyke City. Those days, those years, those days and years living on the on Dwight were the best because I have beautiful childhood memories growing up with my family and friends. And I believe that I grew up as one of the luckiest kids because I got to learn a lot from my elders, especially about respect, which was part of our culture and important in those days. Something that you earned working hard at. <coughs> it wasn't something that just to happen or fall out of the sky, it had to be earned. I came from a very poor family. We didn't have much. We didn't have much, but there was one thing we did have, and that was love. While living on Dodge City, I grew up living next door to one of the most powerful, strong black activist leaders, leader, who was a Murawari Mur woman, Auntie Essie Coffee, oh, better yes. known as the Bush Queen. Who <laughs> received an OAM award from the Queen of England. Auntie Essie Coffee, fought for the rights, fought up to, up to the end for the rights of her people, and she is one of my biggest imp inspirations today. Mm. There is also some other powerful women who inspired me. Annie Joyce Do, who is now deceased, but her legacy still lives on with the Bush to Beach program, which I am still a part of today. <coughs> Annie Eva Boney, Annie Doreen McHughes, Annie Di Hardy, Annie Grace Shillingsworth, and last but not least, who's seen something in me that no one else has seen. My biggest mentor of all, Annie Grace Gordon, who I've worked alongside a lot of years with helping women and children escape and overcome domestic violence with the both of us being survivors ourselves. I went to Brewer on a central school at the age of five and left, at, left school at the age of 14 when I was in year eight. Going to school for me was good because I got to see and play with my friends I went to school at a time when white people were allowed to come and take you out of school and say that they didn't want you there because they had the power and the authority back in those days. If they didn't take us home to Dodge City, we would get sent down to the clinic room where the nurse or the sister would check our bodies for sores and scabies. They would also check our heads for lice, then they would wash us and send us back up to the classroom. We had to sit right at the back of the classroom because we had the the, the, the body and lice lotion was very smelly and it stunk. And the rest of the kids, the white kids, would look and laugh, laugh, at, laugh at us. I would get very angry and fight and get into trouble. So I was then sent up to the headmaster's room to get the cane across the knuckles. I didn't, get it, I didn't get very much education to learn to read and write much. And the teachers didn't care if I did because I was just another little black kid who came from the came from the reserve next to the rubbish tip. Those memories still haunt me today. But I had a choice to hold on to the hurt and pain, to be a bitter or a better person, to stop and give up. But I didn't. It made me to be made me to be a stronger person. Today I walk proud. 
today I walk into, into the school proud with my head up high. I am a member of the school reference group <laughs> and the ACD, a voice for our Aboriginal teachers and children and community. I believe that is why I'm a very con that is why I'm very compassionate about the Yes I Can program working with my people at a grass grassroots level who, like me, didn't have the opportunity to read and write and have been hoarded by things that have stopped them from getting an education. I got the call from Jack Beetson and I was stuck on the mountains on the XPT in the snow and I was going back to Brewarrina from my cousin's funeral. And I was feeling down and very sad when Jack said that I had the coordinator's job. I just started to cry with tears of joy. Today, God couldn't have given me a better job and he couldn't, could have, couldn't put me in a better place than the Yes I Can program, working with wonderful people like Deborah Dernan, Bob Bowden, Alexandra Dixon, Charla and the team behind the scenes of, of, of the Literacy for Life. And most of all, my bush medicine, and my cultural connection, strong black Nimba man, Jack Beetson. <laughs> I want to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you all very much. Even though it's been a long, hard journey, and there's still a lot more work to be done, and we may have only touched the surface of trying to close the gap for our people, the First Nations people, we have to tell those who are lis listening in all places, you have to start from the bottom to the top, not from the top to the bottom, mm -hmm. yeah. because it hasn't worked and it won't work. It has to be our way or no way. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm.